In the last few decades, literary festivals have become part of Britain's cultural landscape. In 1983, there were only three in the UK. Today, there are over 300. Some are international events that attract thousands of people. Others are smaller, more intimate events that celebrate writers from the local area. But they all have one thing in common. They all celebrate books. The York Literature Festival is only eight years old, but it is quickly getting a reputation as one of the most exciting literary events in the country. It attracts national and international figures, as well as local writers and performers. And at the heart of the festival is York itself, this ancient walled city in the north of England has a long literary history, which you can find out all about on the festival's city tour. I am maker and maid and almighty... York's association with literature stretches back to the Middle Ages, when the city became famous for its religious mystery plays. Later, thanks to its reputation as a centre of craftsmanship, York became an early hub of bookmaking and Lawrence Stern's famous novel, Tristram Shandy, was published here on Stonegate in 1760. If you look here, Jack Stern was the uncle of Lawrence Stern who wrote Tristram Shandy. Now, how many people have read Tristram Shandy? 500 copies were printed in York and then it sort of went to London and it sold. In two months, it was a sensation and it produced... York's ancient architecture has also made it a favourite setting for some of Britain's most famous authors. The city's cathedral, York Minster, appears in books by Charles Dickens and Wilkie Collins, and the city is the hometown of Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe. More recently, York has continued to produce literary talents throughout the 20th and 21st centuries, from the poet W.H. Auden to the prize-winning writer, Kate Atkinson. The festival builds on York's strong tradition to bring together people from all corners of the literary world. In some of the city's most beautiful and historic buildings, there are readings by all kinds of writers, including some of the country's best-known authors and poets. People sitting down for dinner don't feel their chairs taken away, put back again. This is Paul Farley, an English poet, who has also worked as a non-fiction author, journalist and university lecturer. Paul published his first collection of poetry, The Boy from the Chemist is Here to See You, in 1998. The work was awarded the Somerset Maugham Award and his second collection won the Whitbread Poetry Prize. Today, he is reading with the Irish poet Tara Bergen, who has just published her first book of poetry, This is Yarrow. This debut collection has been very well received, and in 2014, she was named one of the next generation poets by the Poetry Book Society. For established writers like Paul, festivals are a great place to meet fans and discuss work while up-and-coming writers like Tara get the chance to reach a wider audience. For festival goers themselves, it offers the opportunity to learn more about their favourite writers and discover new and exciting talent too. Many audience members are also aspiring writers themselves. They come to gain inspiration and also, more practically, for the many writing workshops that take place all over the city. This is It's in the Details, a class about crafting plot and creating drama. Here, budding writers can learn the fundamentals of plot development, practicing how to move the plot forward while adding tension to the story. The workshop is led by Rob O'Connor, a creative writing teacher at the Centre for Lifelong Learning at the University of York. 
but participants are encouraged to discuss and critically examine each other's work so they can improve their skills and build their confidence. Whether you're an established author, a first-time writer, or simply an avid reader, literature festivals have something for you. Of course, they're good business too. They create a marketplace where everyone shares a love of literature, so they are a fantastic place to buy and sell books. Engaging with literature is often a solitary experience. Writers usually write alone, readers usually read alone, and the two rarely meet. But literature festivals like this bring book lovers of all kinds together to celebrate the written word and to share their literary experiences, something that doesn't often happen in the world of books.